So, biological ascension. It ties into the genetic manipulation system of the game, and considering the other video for that has been out for, say, around 11 months now, as of the time of making this video, I am going to can that one and actually integrate all the stuff from that into this particular video. So you can also use this as your main guide to turn genes from impossible interact sequences to the clay that you can use to mold anyone into anything. So for those that would like to role play, I do suggest that you use either the hive mind or the syncretic evolution types of species. The former, of course, because they can quote unquote create strains of your own species and that kind of makes sense. And the latter because it already introduces a sep separate a subservient species that you control from the start of the game. Obviously, both are part of Utopia. So if you're just here for a primer on biological engineering you don't own utopia itself then you can ignore this little bit also yes i am aware that hive minds have a special ability to genetically manipulate other species to make them part of their hive however we will cover uh, that particular aspect of the hive mind in its own video one for the hive mind that is anyway biological ascension it's relatively straightforward unlike psionic ascension there's no shroud and uh it's in some aspects it's very similar to the mechanical ascension as you only need to go for the two ascension perks but we'll talk about that in order to access the biological ascension you will need engineered evolution which is one of the ascension perks this will become available once you have researched the gene tailoring technology and have a empty ascension slot it will give you two additional trade points that you can play around with in the species uh, screen uh, obviously this will give you a grand total of three trade points to work with including the one that you get from genetic tailoring uh, in addition you will now also get access to the gene seed purification technology which when research allows you to build gene warriors arguably one of the best armies in the game now obviously uh if you have your three points at this rate at this stage you can start removing all negative species modifiers from your species or whatever species there are within your empire and because you've picked engineered evolution it will now cost half the amount of resources that it would normally cost so uh, if you've tried to get a few useful bonuses at the start of the game and paid for that dearly by getting a bunch of malices now you can use those three points to get rid of those negatives and basically be a lot stronger as a species as is normal with any genetic engineering you will have a event that pops up and you have to activate that within 90 days of generating it or it will cancel itself out Next up is targeted gene expressions. This is a rare technology that you will need in order to move on towards the next stage of a biological ascension. Like I said, it is rare, so it's potentially going to be difficult to get. Uh, obviously, it is within the society tree. But once you finally have it, it's time for evolutionary mastery. This is an ascension perk that becomes available once you have done three others. That, of course, includes engineered evolution and also, like I mentioned, requires targeted gene expressions you will receive three additional gene uh, traits uh, which you can play around with however you may want to wait around with that as you can now finally have access to genetic resequencing technology Res uh, this is basically the key technology for biological ascension it will allow you to remove beneficial and add negative traits to species of your choosing before you could not remove positive traits. Uh, in addition, you will also get five advanced traits to your genetic tailoring kit. Uh, you will have access to Delicious, which increases the pop food output by 100%. This only applies to species that you are farming. So basically, if you are farming a species, you can increase their output by 100% by making them delicious so you can have vast fields neo vast fields where your species is no longer grown no it is indeed farmed then you have nerf staple which produce which produces the perfect mining slave species it increases mineral and food output by 10 percent but are terrible at generating unity power and science it's an added bonus they will not generate uh, any sort of negative happiness 
because they don't experience happiness at all, which means you will never get generate any unrest. It's a perfect fate for a species that has been annoying you the entire game, especially in combination with some of the other traits. You can get massive bonuses on mineral income uh, generated by your miners. Uh, then we have Fertile. Well, it kind of goes without saying. It decreases growth time by 30%, and because of all the fucking, happiness is increased by 5%. Erudite, which increases tech output by 20% for the species and all, uh, for that species, and all leaders of that species will uh, get an additional leader level, which is pretty damn huge. Finally, we have Robust, which increases the habitability bonus to 30% for that species, and the species' uh, leader lifespan increases by 30 years. It's pretty damn expensive, but you have so many points to play around with, because as I mentioned... Uh, genetic resequencing technology allows you to add negative and positive traits. So effectively, you can wipe the entire field when it comes to your genetic traits because all the positives will get refunded. Yes, you will get two points back if you've spent two points earlier on in your genetic tailoring. Uh, negatives, obviously... To remove them, they will still cost uh, you resources, but in general, you will have the ability to completely wipe things out and, and design the perfect creature for what you have in mind. You can have a perfect docile mining species, a glorious warrior drone cast, or the tastiest cattle, or the perfect scientist brain. In combination with the species right system and properly managing these different breeds within your empire allows you to be one of the most powerful empires in the game. Of course, if you min-max your species just right. Until next time, I hope that this was useful to you and that you learned something today. If you haven't, well, feel free to pop your questions into the comments. And if you see something today that you thought, you know what, I do not agree with that, put that in the comments as well. Until next time... Take good care of yourselves, and remember, it's a cookbook.